Okay, guys. Since we're not really at school right now, I uh, snuck into my uh, wife's studio. And um, just don't tell her this is on the internet, okay? All right. So today I want to show you the six steps that we use at school for soldering. So step one, they have to fit. Okay, step one, we're going to be doing a lap joint. That's two pieces of metal overlapping one another. And so fit is pretty easy for us because if we have two flat pieces of metal, they'll probably fit. If they don't fit, if they have a slight curve to it, use your rawhide mallet and hammer it on a, on a flat um, metal surface and that will make sure that it is all nice and flat. Step two, they have to be clean. We want to make sure that this is clean. Now hold this kind of close here, see if you can kind of see, but you can kind of see that it has a little bit of a tarnish to it. What I did on the other side is I sanded it to a number two um, grit, which for us is a 320 grit, and that makes that metal surface brand new and shiny, and it will make it so that the, the, um, the uh, solder will actually adhere to the metal and, and penetrate into the structure of the metal instead of just sticking to, well, not even sticking because solder is really, really snobby. It doesn't like dirt, doesn't like anything. It has to be clean for solder to actually flow on metal. Step three, they need to be fluxed. Okay, for step three, we're going to be using SureFlow Flux. SureFlow Flux is the uh, kind of the looks like antifreeze or something. Um, it has that special color so that you know it's you know what it is, and um, that you know you don't drink this stuff. Please be careful. So you take your piece of metal and you dip it in your flux. The flux allows the solder to actually flow and adhere to the metal. Please cover the container so it doesn't dry out. Step four, you want to have the solder placement. Okay, so I have my pieces that fit. They're fluxed. Now, this step, I'm going to be placing my solder. I have the medium solder pallions that are pre-cut for you. And this whole process is for that tiny little piece of solder right there. This is what does the job. It's a very tiny piece. You don't need a lot. If you have a lot, then it'll flow everywhere and you'll have tons of cleanup. So just that tiny little piece of solder don't try to get the biggest one. If you need two, you can use two, but less is more. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here. My solder placement, and please get used to using tools because if you don't use tools, you're gonna end up touching something hot and burning yourself. So I'm gonna put my solder for this basic lap joint I'm going to place my solder in the middle. I'm going to put that one up on top. I'm going to get this right where I want it. And from this angle, you should be able to see when this flows. So we've gone through all of the steps. Now all we have to do is apply some heat. Step five we are going to be applying heat. Okay, this is kind of fun. If you look in there, you'll see a little tiny spark going. That will light your torch. Your torch has two sides, a red and a green. Green is oxygen because it provides life. Okay. Red is for gas. You want to light the gas first and then adjust the flame with the oxygen. If I Hold this down on the igniter, light it, it 
want a little bit more flame. And then I'm going to adjust the oxygen, not so that it's a sharp flame, not so it's like the real sharp, crazy pinpoint flame or anything. I want to have a bushy flame. This is the difference between oxidation flame and a reduction flame. And we want a reduction flame. We want to burn up all the oxygen in our, in our torch supply, in our heat supply, so that it doesn't oxidize the metal. It's a very important thing that took me a long time to realize. But if you have too much oxygen and it's making too sharp of a point and too bright of a, bright of a uh, uh, tip there, you're using the wrong flame. Big bushy flame. If you can think of a big bushy flame, that's the kind that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And I want to circle my project about 10 times. A little bit more oxygen. Circle it about 10 times and you'll start to see the flux burn off. And it'll turn white and that's fine. The next step it's going to turn clear and kind of glassy looking. And then I'm going to concentrate on the bottom piece because if you see this bottom piece is resting right on that big huge chunk of solder pad and that really, really um, takes a lot of the heat away. And you just saw this move just a little bit and I'm going to come in here with my other tool. Bring the heat off and it'll stay. These two pieces are now one piece. Now turning the flame off, please turn the oxygen off first, righty tighty, and then turn the gas off. Only step six is quench. Our next step is quench and pickle. We take our hot metal, and if you listen, it makes a great noise. They stayed together, it is soldered, it is in one piece. Now we pickle it. Pickle, remember, is that pickling acid that takes off all of that um, oxidation. You can only use copper tongs with that. These are steel. The ones that you work around the bench are steel. I hope you can recognize what copper is. So you use the copper tongs to put it in the pickle and to retrieve it. Okay, we have two pieces that are absolutely soldered together, not coming apart. The um, solder is very permanent unless you apply a lot of heat like you would on a torch. Then you can actually break that solder joint and have a replacement. If you, if you um, do make a mistake, you can heat it up and you can shift those a little bit. And so, um, but that joint is very solid and um, that's, the way, that's the way jewelers work. They work in hard solder. They don't work in the soft stuff with a little soldering iron. When pieces need to be permanent, they do it the right way. I want you to learn this technique and, um, and you know, practice, play with some scrap metal, and then move on to your design and get it right. And just please build enough confidence because as you can see, it's not that crazy difficult. It is a little intimidating, but practice, you know, practice safe manipulation of your, 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 your stuff. Always touch your project with the tools. Don't touch it with your hands when it's on the solder pad. Um, a lot of people get burnt that way, but please just use the, the tongs and tweezers and your solder pick, and um, you're gonna have a lot of great success. Thank you.